this is Cashology by FMBO, a podcast devoted to the art and science of managing your money. It's like school, but your only homework is living your best financial life. Class is now in session. April is National Financial Literacy Month, which every year is both a challenge and an opportunity. Coinciding with tax season, it's a great time for everyone to check their financial situation and to hone their financial skills. To check up on our personal financial management and recommit to budgeting, smart spending, and regular savings. Thanks for listening to the Cashology Podcast, hosted by your guide on the path to financial savvy, me, Julie Wyans. Today's guest is Michelle Houston, a personal banker out of our Kansas market, ready to talk to you all about National Financial Literacy Month, or maybe we can just call it Being Smart With Your Money Month. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me. We are very happy to have you. Before we dive into today's topic, don't forget to subscribe for future podcast episodes coming your way soon. Indeed, milady. Let us proceed, lest we delay the financial wisdom further. Verily, I say, investment products are not FDIC insured, not a deposit or any other obligation of the bank, not insured by any federal government agency, not guaranteed by the bank, may lose value. This podcast should not be copied or reproduced without permission. Information and statements within the podcast are subject to change without notice. The Cashology Podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to constitute investment advice or recommendations. First National Bank of Omaha does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any information or statements within this podcast. When making decisions about your financial situation, consult a financial professional for advice. Podcasts are not regularly updated and information may become outdated. Deposit products are offered by First National Bank of Omaha, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The Cashology Podcast, copyright First National Bank of Omaha. And now I bid thee victory on the field of finance, milady. Huzzah! Now, Michelle, what's the best advice you've ever gotten about money? I would say there's two pieces of advice that really stick out to me. I would say the first was something that my dad always told me, and he always told me to pay, make sure I pay myself first, that I am saving for myself and my retirement first as a priority in my savings. Um, And the second wouldn't be really be advice, but it's a fact that's kind of stuck with me, especially when it comes to my retirement savings. And that would be that the earlier you save, the less you have to save. And that's something that's always kind of stuck out to me. Those are two really great pieces of advice. You know, both have a connotation that starting early is the best. And there may be listeners that feel like they've missed the boat, that maybe it's a little too late in life to really get a good hold on their finances and and build up large savings for retirement. But we're here to say that they're absolutely wrong, right? It's never too late to start. It's also never too early. So let's talk about savings. You brought that up. I'd love to know more about how I can learn about savings, what I should be saving for, where I can save money. So yeah, with savings, I would say the first thing is you absolutely need a budget. Most of us know what we bring in every month, and we also have a good idea of what our expenses are. Um, and so really taking a look at your finances and seeing where the rest is going could really give you a good idea of how much you can be saving. So we want to save for lots of things. So if we have upcoming expenses, maybe we're saving for a new car, a new house. But it's also just important to have funds in your savings for emergency purposes. So things that we don't anticipate, but eventually always do come up in life. So I know we always recommend have an emergency savings fund, like you had just mentioned. And I think that definitely goes back to your your first point about paying yourself first. I really like that because I think that both talks about savings and also debt. So making sure that you're paying off at least your minimum debt payments and then looking at how to maximize your savings, right? Correct. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're always making those minimum payments because credit is something that it can be a real struggle for people to fix once they slip up. Um, So making sure you're always making those minimum payments and on time and then really building an emergency savings. And so when you do get into situations, you do have cash on hand instead of going back to those credit cards or other forms of debt. So Michelle, you're a personal banker, which means you work with our customers every day in order to build up their savings accounts and manage their budgets, talk to them about their financing. And since it is National Financial Literacy Month, 
Can you advise me on how I can approach my local personal banker, what I should bring to that meeting, uh, and just how to prepare me so that I can seem as financially literate as possible or just kind of lay everything on the table and, and learn more from them? That is absolutely what we are here to do. We want to help our customers. We want to help them on their path to financial well-being. Um, really, a budget is the first place to start bringing in what you bring in, what goes out in expenses, and then looking at where the rest of the money is going. We have several products for savings accounts. Um, we actually have a product called the Pathway Savings that's meant for new savers. And we actually reward our customers for putting a savings plan together and making monthly contributions and sitting down with your banker and talking about it. So you don't need to bring too much in if you ever want to sit down with your banker. Just an idea of what your goals are. And we're here to help. How often are you having budgeting conversations with customers? Is that a pretty common conversation? I would say it's more common with our younger customers. Um, A lot of time our older customers have a good idea of what they're doing or have a plan and have it figured out. But really with the younger customers, it's something that we do quite frequently. They just haven't really sat down and had a lot of time to think about it or really anybody to talk to. So it's always encouraging to see those younger customers come in and want to talk about savings. That's really great. And I I love that we have the resources available to talk to any kind of customer and help them wherever they are on their path to financial literacy. You know, you talked a little bit about the savings accounts we have available and, you know, you come in and sit down with the banker and then we figure out what products work for the customer. When I come into a branch? Can I just walk in and chat with a personal banker? Do I have to set up an appointment? How do I logistically go about that? You're always welcome to just walk in. Um, Most of the time, we will have a banker available for you, but we absolutely do appointments as well. So if there's only a certain day and time that works for you, if you just want to give us a call and make sure that somebody's available, we'll make sure that we're ready to help. And for our savings product, is there a minimum amount of dollars I need to bring in in order to start it? So it depends on the product. For some of our savings, no. Um, The one I was referring to earlier, the Pathway, we do uh, $25 to open it. But the good thing about that product is as soon as you open it with $25, we also credit you $25. Oh, great. Wow. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I just want to know when I go into the branch, what should I bring? How should I prepare? I think you've really helped laid the, the path for me. What else do you think I should know in terms of Financial Literacy Month or what you want to share with our listeners about how to better ourselves financially? So making sure you have that emergency savings, it's first and foremost, probably the number one piece of advice. Have at least six months of income set up in our savings. That way, if there's ever an unexpected job loss or we recently experienced a pandemic where a lot of people were placed out of work, you have that to fall back on. And then once you do build those good savings habits and you have a healthy amount in your savings, I would really recommend sitting down with a financial advisor. We have a certified financial planner on staff in Kansas City. And once you get to that point, we can really look at ways to not only save money, but make your money grow. Really great advice, Michelle. And I think for those listeners out there that have kids, which Financial Literacy Month primarily uh, is prominent in schools, but we wanted to bring it to our listeners as well. Uh, ask them if they've had if they have anything going on this month at school about managing their money. It's never too early, like Michelle said, to start budgeting or saving. Even a piggy bank is saving money. Um, and bringing it into the branch and talking with a banker and getting them acclimated to that sort of environment is an awesome thing to do. And just encouraging them to get involved in, in your finances and how you save and your education level of, of financial freedom. And, uh, and there's tons of information online at fmbo.com about the savings products Michelle mentioned or just how what branches are nearby or how you can make an appointment with a personal banker. All of those resources are online at fmbo.com. So feel free to check those out. Michelle, you were such a great guest today. I really appreciate all your knowledge and our customers are so lucky to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and keep an eye out for more Cashology episodes coming your way soon.